Hey there, this is Kevin Post, postcream.com, and if you hear me sniffing, it's because I have a uh, cold today. You know, it's all gross and disgusting outside, and I got kids, and they bring home all sorts of bugs, so. Um, but we're gonna go through how to take a metering off the face. I keep getting this question over and over, and um, I already have one video out there, so we thought we'd go into it a little more today and actually show you exactly how to do it, okay? The first thing, you need to take your camera off of automatic. It needs to be set out to manual. Um, and so that's as simple as just turning it to the M. You know, get it off of after priority program. You need to be on manual for this to work, okay? And then you need to turn your camera meter um, off of spot or center weighted. And then in Canon, you wanna be in an evaluative, evaluative metering. Um, I have a hard time with that today. And in Nikon, you wanna set it to matrix. And it's as simple as just pressing a couple buttons and turning. And we'll, you know, have a little close-up with the Nikon one here. Um, but with Canon, you know, just go ahead and look in your uh, manual, and it'll show you how to change that. Um, that's very important too, because everybody wants to do spot metering. Um, that's like because uh, they hear that from somebody, you know, some old photographer. Oh, spot metering. Well, spot metering is from like the 50s and 60s, and it's a one-degree spot. So if you look at my face here, there's like a hot spot on my nose. Okay, so if you spot meter and you spot meter off my nose, it's going to give you the wrong exposure. If you go over here, it's going to give you a different exposure than that. If you hit the spot meter up here, it's going to be different. So you want to get away from that. Center weighted was the next one they came out with, which was better. But evaluative metering and matrix metering is by far the best. It actually has, um, you know, they've got thousands and thousands of scenes that they've, uh, you know, developed over the years and they, the computer kind of generates the exposure for that. It knows what's going on. But it's all based off of 18% gray, okay? So what you do, let's have Essie come out here. You're in manual, okay? How far back can you go? Right there. So I'm gonna come up, I'm literally gonna meter off her face just like this. I'm not even, it doesn't need to be in focus or nothing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill the frame and take my meter reading off of it and there you go. And I've got my meter. Okay, so that's, that's, that's good. So let me show you inside now, because a lot of people don't know the inside of their camera, which is kind of funny to me. But inside you're gonna have a meter, like so. It'll be either at the bottom or it'll be on the side. And what this is, you have a plus and a minus side, right? Okay, you want your meter to be right in the middle. So you turn, like with me, I always start with my aperture, most photographers do. So I know what my aperture is gonna be set at. I'm shooting at 2.8, so okay, so I'm at f2.8. So I don't even have to m mess with that. Okay, now what I do is I take my shutter speed and I start dialing it in to where it comes back to where the meter reads in the middle at the zero. Okay, that's where you don't want, you don't want it plus or minus, you want it as close to middle as possible. And now with thirds of uh, stops with your shutter speed, it's easy to do. So then what I do then is I use, there's a simple way to figure out if your shutter speed is too slow. Um, it's basically whatever the length of your lens is, that's the minimum shutter speed you want. So if I'm shooting a 50 millimeter, a 60th of a second is about the bare minimum that I want to shoot at to have like no movement. So if I'm shooting at 85, so around an 80th of a second and so on, you know, a 100 millimeter would be a 125th of a second. A 200 millimeter would be like a 250th of a second. So you just kind of use the focal length of your lens as the minimum shutter speed. So let's say I take a meter reading like I did on SE there and it's like too slow of a shutter speed. Then I start bumping my ISO up until I get a fast enough shutter speed to be able to shoot handheld. And it really is that simple. If you do this, you're gonna get proper exposures all the time, no more of this underexposed stuff. I get this all the time where people are like, well, I did what you said, but it's underexposed. Well, they're in aperture priority. So what happens is they come up, they take their meter reading, they back up, well, it's in aperture priority, so it's automatic. So it like reads, oh, there's all this bright stuff in the background now. You have to be in manual to do this. So there you go. Now you know how to take a proper meter reading, so I shouldn't be having any more of these underexposed images coming to me. So there you go. Thanks. Kevin Post, postcreative.com. Thanks.